Hello there YouTube! Now, I've already tried to make this bloody video once and my media converter completely mangled it. So hopefully, hopefully it'll fucking work this time. First of all, many, many thanks indeed to Ray, I Love Mess, for his recent shout out and kind words. They're very, very much appreciated. And keep up the excellent work. Second of all, there are loads of uh, new Transformers reviewers coming out of the woodwork on YouTube, and they are absolutely fantastic. You'll find links to some of my favourites over there, in the sidebar. Now, I have something of a confession to make. I have betrayed my Decepticon loyalties and thrown in my lot with a filthy, stinking Autobot. And here he is. This is Generation 1 Skylinks. Uh, he originally came about, I think it was in either the second or the third wave of the original Generation 1 toys. I, I, don't, I don't quite know. I'm sure someone out there who has better knowledge of the toy history will uh, fill me in on that one. But uh, he came about in the post-movie era after Optimus Prime had died and Megatron had been converted to Galvatron and Rodimus Prime had become the leader of the Autobots. God help them all. Um, and he was actually quite well characterised in the uh, third season of the Generation 1 cartoon. Unlike most of the characters that appeared around that point, they tended to be very generic. You had characters like Springer, who was um, your typical goody two-shoes Autobot, RC pretty typical simpering female character. Uh, Scourge, typical Decepticon lunatic. And then you had this guy, and Skylinks was interesting because um, although he is an Autobot and he does adhere to the Autobot ideals quite rigidly, he's also incredibly arrogant. He regards himself as ultimately superior to everyone, including his fellow Autobots, in every single way. He is uh, an intellectual snob. He is phenomenally intelligent, and he's very, very aware of the fact. He is larger, stronger, faster than most of the other Autobots, and he's also capable of interstellar flight, which, of course, does uh, nothing to dampen his ego. Now, the toy itself, when I unpacked it, it reminded me of when I was a... It took me right back, really, to the 1980s when I was a kid. And you'd get that rather large and promising package for your birthday or for Christmas or something. And you open it, and it's a this fantastic, big, meaty toy. And that's what I love about this, and Generation 1 in general. The fact that they aren't really designed to cater to an adult audience. They are toys. And as such, they're designed to be played with rather than simply for display purposes. You, there are no ball joints on this guy, and there is no flimsy plastic whatsoever. The plastic is incredibly dense and will stand up to an incredible amount of abuse. Also, I had incredible fun putting the decals on. This is the. This is actually not the original Skylinks. This is the. Um, it is the original mold, but it's the uh, 2007 Japanese reissue. Cost me quite a bit of money, but I really don't care. I absolutely love this toy. I love the size of it and the, how gimmicky the whole thing is. This came about when Hasbro were getting a wee bit more experimental with the Transformers line, uh, but not to the point whereby the gimmicks overshadowed the toy in and of itself. As you can see, it's a beautiful interstellar shuttle with this curious undercarriage underneath. Now, that is described as expanded, sto uh, expanded storage space. Uh, Skylinks is the lieutenant commander of the Autobot forces, so he's quite high-ranking. But he also fulfills uh, a secondary role as uh, interstellar transport, and that's what this is for. He carries Autobots to um, military battlegrounds and whatnot. Um, and that's pretty much the function that he performed for the most part in the uh, third season of the cartoon. I imagine much to his chagrin. I get the impression he probably wouldn't like being relegated as transport very much, <clears throat> given his um, self-proclaimed overwhelming intellect. Anyway, there's the toy. It's actually, for a Generation 1 toy, it's got lots of detail. Most of it is provided by these decals, obviously, but... Even the mould itself has a significant amount of sculpted detail, particularly on the undercarriage here. 
with regards to the decals specifically, putting these bastards on took me right back to when I was a kid when you used to get a new Transformer toy and you'd set about trying to put the stickers on using those very very vague instructions they used to give you and you'd inevitably end up putting them on in the wrong place then you'd have to pull them off and they'd tear or they'd leave a mark on the Transformer and you'd be terribly terribly put out by it but yes, it's it really is a fantastic piece of work. I haven't stopped playing with this yet. I mean, I I, I was actually I was working the other day, and um, I just couldn't wait to finish work so I could play with this guy. He is stunning. I particular I don't know why I like the back. I love the engines. I think the engines are absolutely superb. Now then. Before we run out of time, which I probably will for this review, actually, I, I may have to put it in two parts. Um, I'm going to split. He's a he's an interesting guy. He's a I suppose you could call him a duo bot, akin to the the later duo cons, uh, flywheels and uh, battle trap. But uh, those were shit, and this is most certainly not. He is wonderful. I'm going to split him in half and transform him into his two component parts. Right, off we go. And there we have Skylinx's ground module in its robot mode. And it's, according to the blurb, it's supposed to be a Lynx. It doesn't look too much like a Lynx, but that really doesn't matter. It looks amazing for what it is. It's huge and bulky and rife with sculpted details, which is a rarity for Transformers from this period. It really is beautifully detailed. I'm not sure, but I get, I get the impression from this toy that it's like many of the, the early Transformers toys. It was taken from a, another toy line, adopted from another toy line. I'm sure someone will, will fill me in on that one. Um, but yes, it's wonderful. It's suppo According to the blurb, it's supposed to be very agile in this mode. It's supposed to leap incredibly high and uh, be able to dodge about. You don't get that impression from it. Rather you get this impression of incredible power. It's huge and bulky and it has some quite wonderful gimmicks. All of the all of the legs are, are articulated, they will move, but if you look underneath at the, well, what can only be described as the groin area, there are two switches. This one has roll on this side and walk on this side. When it's in its uh, space shuttle mode, if you switch it to roll then these wheels will start moving and it will move about. If you switch it to walk and flip this button here, which is very conspicuously placed. Nice one, Hasbro. The legs will move, and it will actually walk along quite nicely. Now that is a cool gimmick. I mean, listen, listen to the noise of that. Can you imagine being a parent and having to hear that every two seconds whilst your kid was playing with this? Uh, that's added for value, really, isn't it? I mean, if you're a kid and you can annoy your parents with it, that is... That is just fantastic. And he actually walks fairly convincingly. He, he, he sort of ambles along, but it suits the bulk of the character very, very nicely. I also love, I love the chrome head. I mean, it's very much a robotic approximation of what a, a lynx or a cat or whatever is supposed to look like. But the chrome is beautiful. It really is wonderful. He's also, bizarrely, he's got two tails. I mean, that's, that's odd. But, you know what, I really don't care. I will not hear a word said against this toy. It is brilliant. I always measured the worth of Generation 1 toys in particular by trying to imagine how much attention I would have paid to them when I was a kid. And I can tell you without any fear of hyperbole that I would have played with this guy for months on end without getting bored of him. He is wonderful. Right then, on to the next part, the Dino Bird.